He says he learned that from one of his saddle horse. His saddle horse was kind of crippled and turning loose. And that night he heard his horse was singing that song. He says, don't worry, I'll be all right. And we'll travel again. So his horse did come out of it. For sure, I'll never forget that song. So, I kept that all the time to remember him. I kind of have a shaky voice when I sing that. our first mother, the earth. She provides for all our needs, revealing to us the secrets of her roots, her medicines, sharing with us the ways of her four-footed and winged children. accept these gifts from our Mother Earth humbly, without complacency, for we know we can never be wiser than she, who before memory gave us life.
Good. Want some, dear? No. Oh, I'll give you one. Move. Ah. Come on. Oh no. Okay. Mama. Oh, timer, Steve. They believe in spirit. They can't just go out and dig when they first come out. You got young girls in their teenagers, about eight of them. They go out with one old lady, and every plant they shoot. And then the old lady is right in the center. She'd pray, and when they're done, they start digging. Mm -hmm. Then Mom, they don't I dig too much, just enough for a feast. A so box. they get back, and Mom. that's where the bitter oh, feast is. Mom. Then everybody can dig. Uh -oh. Those that didn't even go to the feast, they can go at any time. Oh, look. Oh. After you peel it on, you stick it in a pot and cook it. Mm -hmm. Eat it. Look at that yellow part. The yellow at all. Look. Oh, I took the yellow part off. I see. Take that part because that's real bitter. I see. Oh. Oh. Hey, eat it. Mm. Yeah. Eat it, yeah. <laughs> no. See, here's the plant. They're ready to bloom when, when they bloom. They're no more good to get because the skin won't stay on. I mean, it, it'll stay on, it won't peel like the way this one is. They're about ready to, it's near over already. And this is the one that's already cleaned. You can wash them and they, they'll be just white. Then you can dry them. And when they're dry, you can put them away for the winter. Whenever you want to eat some bitter, like dessert, that's what they call this. They don't eat that every meal, like for wakes and dances. They cook a bunch of these stuff here. These are good. No, no, I can't. Can you? Can I? I'm hungry, Mom. Oh, green. Well, we'll we cook these and you can eat them, okay? Mm -hmm. See, we'll cook nice them and clean. Yeah, I'll cook getting in my way. No, you leave that for the pot. This is what my grandma used to teach us. Kids growing up, I want you to do that when you grow up and show them. The kids too. I don't want that to come to the end. I want you to keep it up. Yeah, I can't move my Ready for the pot? Now, when it's done, all of us got to eat some of that. Just to taste, taste a bit of find out how it is. Oh, 
Can you keep showing that to Alan's kids, your kids? Can you see the beetroot? You see it cooking? Tata's food. They were proud about this bitter thing. Everywhere, every tribe has feast for bitter. But bitter is their special food. Like when they gather for wakes dances, somebody's birthday, they always cook the bitter. Yeah. When that's not something like that, they eat it for their own use to give it to the kids. It's medicine too. Oh my. <laughs> This type of a weed is used as a green padding in the camas when, you, when the grandmothers bake their camas. My grandmother would go out and pick this type of a weed to pad her camas pit, and she would uh, bundle it like a bundled hay, and she would tie it with a rope, and she would bring it back on her back like this and deliver it to her camas pit. Then there is the thorn berry, which had many uses to the Indian people. The berry was pounded and dried. The wood was made for a camas digger. The thorn was used to pierce the ears. Then there is the snowberry bush, which grows to about the height of four or five feet, but in most areas, usually it grows taller. And this is very important for uh, maternity use. It is used immediately after birth for uh, flushing out the new mother. And it was used a great deal by the Indian midwives. Can I keep it? Yeah. And so want it, I mean, Shelly? Hold that. Those guys didn't even look very good. There's one. Oh. I got it. This is what Camus looks like. <clears throat> this is what the old people dig. It's their main source of food. You can do it different ways. I think a lot of people know what what they are. And they're really good tasting food. I think if you want to try it, you'd want to come out and dig for some. That should be good if you can get it to work. Let me do it once. Let me do it once. I'll try it. No, no, no. 
Copper pine stuff. Here's what? When? <laughs> um, the way they found this valley full of chemists, they had a runner. It's got a different description if it, I was telling it in Indian. He came over the mountains and seen this big lake, so he thought about fishing, hunting, and trapping. So we went back and told his people when they came, the valley that they thought was a lake was nothing but flowered uh, things, and they dug it up. It was bulbs, so they tried many ways to learn how to, to cook it, to eat it. And they discovered by bacon that they can get uh, real sweet tasting bulbs. They're brown. And ever oh, since wow. then, the people call them camas people because from different reservations, they'd come and trade with them for these uh, Indian chocolates. Now the kids call it, and call it camas. So that used to be their main source of food. Now, most of our young people here don't even know what it is. As I uh, look around and uh, pick out the fresh vegetables and breads and cereals and meat, and as I look carefully, and then I think of all the preservatives included, like salts and other seasonings, and in the old way, among the Indian people, we didn't have any of these things that might uh, uh, create uh, internal disorders and perhaps these are some of the things that do uh, uh, create health problems to many of our elders and uh, I know many of them don't do not eat seasoned foods like uh, cold cuts and such and some of them they cannot uh, even uh, eat any bacon with too much too much salt in there also with ham, because these were not the type of foods that was uh, with the earlier, early Indians. So I don't know Her parents had told her that she was three years old when they re relocated to this particular place. It was somewhat like uh, taking it from uh, the non-Indian dictators that um, they had to move out of their uh, aboriginal homes and land around the Spokane River. According to verbal reports that has been handed down, she, it was known to her that there were uh, 40, 48 families who moved into this territory. She is telling me that uh, when the Indians had decided to relocate 
and move out of the Spokane River territories that they disbanded and they moved to three different areas like to the Flathead and to the Welpnet area and to this area, to the Coeur d'Alene territories of this area. And her parents agreed to move to this particular area. They were expected to uh, stay here for five years to prove themselves that they had truly relocated here. She said following the five years, then the, the people who relocated were granted uh, small homes. And her home, her front room, is that part. And she said that has been about, to her knowledge, that's 81 years ago. Then I, re I have many recollections and many memories here. I was very young. I was born in, right here on this place. And so naturally, this was my playground. The Indian belief was to rise with the rising sun. And as a mother, when you would rise with the rising sun, in the Aboriginal times, it was time to talk to your children how to grow up to be useful on behavior, on respect. These were taught at early hours, the first thing in the morning. You spoke to them, you, you would announce, this is another day early in the morning to listen because I am going to speak to you about life. A long time ago, there was an old lady. They were a sack woman, and everybody was scared of her. See her come, they all sit right like these here. They wouldn't run around. Like if there was feast or anything that's going on, she has kids all sitting there. They don't move. They just scared of sacrum. So they they believe sacrum that they was going to drown the kids. There was no way they could get away from her. The mother would go out, stand at the door, and she'd holler, Saku, and my kids don't mind. Just like she knew it, next day she'd be there. I brought my sack. Which one? The mother say that one. The beggar said, we behave from now on. She got hold of one girl. She'd stand on corners, ask for money. Hey, Nana. Says, what you been doing? I heard you been bumming some money in our league. She says, no. The mother says she does. So they put her in the sack. She says, I'm going to put you in the ditch, in the creek. You don't mind. She says, I don't mind, but the sack woman didn't believe. They took her in, she threw them in the water, stuck her in there, picked her up, and she begged, said, I'll never do that again. Are you sure? The 
this kid says, yeah, I'm sure, but she fucked him again. And from there, she's a nice girl to know. She is our first mother, the earth. She gave us life, sustained and nourished us. And through the changing seasons of our time with her, we come to look like her. And it is to her that we return, welcomed as nourishment, so that each year, once again, there will be fruitfulness. Hey, uh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh.